People walk by graffiti on a wall and they say that's not art, but how are they an art critic? How can any one person tell another person that one thing isn't art, when to that person it could be the most beautiful thing they've ever done or seen? <laughs> I didn't even know what graffiti was when I started doing it. Like, I learned it from this kid in this neighborhood that I was doing. I was always did art, you know? Like, I was always about art. And this kid was doing, like, taking people's names and putting lightning bolts and making the letters connect and shit, you know? And I was like, fuck, dude, that's fucking cool. Started doing it. We all live in cities where, you know, there's tons of billboards, there's things constantly in your face from advertisers, so I think it's kind of a, yeah. a reaction in a way to say that, um, you know, this is our place too, and corporations shouldn't own it all. My name's Lori Rasmussen, and I'm the president of Goodbye Graffiti in Seattle and we remove graffiti. This is a, a situation of a criminal activity and it's costing our neighborhoods dearly and it's costing our city dearly, it's costing our nation dearly. It is a multi-billion dollar uh, impact, negative impact, and uh, the resources required to remove graffiti and address this issue are significant. And uh, down to the local neighborhood level, if you're walking down the street and you're seeing a lot of debris and trash and, and then of course you look up and you see graffiti, it, it starts to you know, remind people and uh, resemble chaos in some way and so it's, it brings a personal public safety into question. Um, so we really want to uh, sort of bridge a gap, so to speak, between the youth and the individuals creating this graffiti and try to get them to understand that this is, um, while one person may see it as an art or, or a message that they're conveying, it's still damaging and costing millions of dollars to remove it. Just accept that um, the people who are working on it don't have anything against you. They're doing it for the love of art and the love of the idea of community and that art is an important part of that. For someone to express themselves by defacing the property, that's wrong. If they want to express themselves, that's fine, but they need to find the correct medium to do it. From where I sit, this utility spends approximately over a million dollars a year cleaning up that stuff. If people didn't get paid to cover up graffiti, that's your job. You need to stop bitching about it because without graffiti, you'd be out of a job. So really, we're providing jobs for the community and people who got to go and clean it up. It's an ongoing system. It's like brushing your teeth, you know? You brush your teeth one day, but the cavities and the bacteria and the plaque are come back. So you got to keep brushing every day. This is how it goes. It's life. It's a circle of life. And it follows a broken window theory. Where you see graffiti, you'll see litter. Where you see those two things, you'll see other crimes. It's a proven fact. If I like pull up and pull the crates out and do a thing on the side of the wall and everyone's seeing me, I'm not gonna rob your house. You know, you know who I am. You know what my car looks like. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna go <laughs> kicking any door seat. Like that's the dude who was painting there the other day. There isn't very many options out there for some people right now and you know 
I don't think it's necessarily the graffiti's fault. I think it's a it's a whole host of issues going yeah. on. But yes, marijuana is a gateway drug, and uh, <laughs> graffiti is a gateway crime. What are you, what are you gonna do about it? There's <laughs> gateways. People have choices yeah. what gates they go through. So it can also be graffiti can be a gateway to a career. I mean, also I've worked with several of the people that I worked with on different murals. Um, before I, I met these guys and uh, and after, have gone from being graffiti artists to getting huge contracts with sneaker companies and and uh, gallery shows and flying to Japan for uh, you know a wall in Japan. I mean, it, it can be a gateway to amazing things as well. Been painting for 18 years. And started painting trains in West Seattle when I was about 12, 13 years old. I got busted like five times, and now I'm, you know, painting free walls and painting whatever I can. Go, go, go! Hurry, 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 hurry! Up, again, up, 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 up! Get it. Hey, don't stand in the middle of these trains. This train can move at any second. I write biker, and the reason why I write biker is I also ride BMX bikes. Um, I was sponsored by a big corporation to, uh, as a professional bike rider, and uh, I had this interview in uh, a large magazine, and I basically said, I am a graffiti writer, and I write biker. And so the next day I went to the corporation, and. They read the interview and said that I incriminated them and their company, so my contract is gonna be over at the end of the year. And I was trying to explain it to them that I'm not just out there, you know, tagging on buses and street signs. I also do this as an art form, and they didn't get it. And as a result of that, I actually lost my contract. We need to either, I don't know, keep kids from getting driver's license, call it a felony that will affect their college scholarship, but we need to do something. That's what we need to do. And uh, we're not stepping up, we're not doing it. We're putting all the pressure on the victim. And that's what bothered me most of all. I've talked to a lot of these kids and they've, and they've told me, well, it's my First Amendment right to tag your building. That's a public building, I own it. First of all, get a job and pay taxes, then you'll understand about ownership. Second of all, for your First Amendment rights stop where they enter into my square foot of space. I got enlightened to the downtown world, hanging out downtown at the skate, you know, the skate session at Westlake. Everybody knows about Westlake, dude. And this cat's face sets me up one day. He's like, hey, man, you do graffiti? I'm like, no, I don't do graffiti. He's like, you do art? I'm like, yeah, I do art, bro. He's like, well, you got a little art book? I'm like, yeah, I got an art book, man. I shut him up. He's like, whoa, you got a sick letter style. I'm like, letter style? What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you do graffiti. I'm like, nah, I don't do graffiti. He's like, yeah, look at that shit. I'm like, huh. Didn't even know what the fuck it was. So he's like, so what's your tag name? Fuck, I didn't have any idea what the fuck tag name was, dude. He's like, what's your nickname? I'm like, well, the kids at school call me Chips. He's like, that's your name, bro. I'm like, really? Okay, cool. It was a movement that grew. It didn't just, it wasn't just a bunch of crap that people were doing. It was really something that people believed in. That's great, you know? But now that it's, there's so many people doing it, it's high stakes for city governments. And uh, I mean, like we were talking today, there's, there's third party businesses, right? That do, that like the battle between the graffiti and the clean wall. It's like high stakes game, you know? There's people getting years in jail for it. You know, I have to protect myself from chemicals. Let's go. What am I gonna do now? So I'm just gonna spray my chemicals on. You know, I'm gonna use a wire brush and, uh, and then run my hose up here, pressure wash it, and uh, the job will be done. 
it's called side track because you know because of the vacuum because we cycle the chemicals but I, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to be able to use it right now because of the stairs so why do one really stay in one place it's all about safety I'm going to get my chemicals then start working on it What are the chemicals that you're using? Well, I don't even know what it is, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. So, you know, but it's a really good chemical, it works really good. I think it's getting even worse. I mean, well, there's so much graffiti everywhere, you know. We're always busy. And, you know, and that's that's good for us because, you know, we get paid for doing this and, hey, I think it's perfect. That's not counting what the mom and pop shops have to spend because when I get a complaint from a citizen, I have to, I have to send an enforcement letter threatening to fine them $100 a day up to $5,000. they have to do something immediately you know they have to take care of it right now real quick so uh so yeah it is kind of uh, frustrating for people to just keep you know they they try to keep their feeling you know nice and clean but you know <laughs> people just keep tagging buildings you know so you know i think it's kind of hard for them to keep paying you know every month to have us go and clean up their building, so yeah, so it's always a headache. <laughs> if you want to say something, say it, by all means. But you don't need to say it in an unlawful manner. And you don't need to say it in a way that causes economic hardship for your neighbors. When people were first originally doing it in the, in the subways and stuff, um, they had never heard, I mean, graffiti wasn't an issue. They had all these cool colors like avocado and you know, all these crazy 70s colors and ice blue, jungle green, uh, icy grape. I mean, just really, you know, old school colors and stuff. But uh, once, once graffiti started hitting LA and everything, they started making it illegal to buy it unless you were 18. And um, it just really, it turned, it turned a, uh, an art form into a, a, you know, a crime. And, um, well, it's just, it's like with any renegade movement, you know, there's things that are going on. People, the people in the community need to be heard. So, you know, if, if they're not given an avenue to, to be heard, you have to go to college, you have to go to four years, you got to go to this to, to be heard. People are just going to say, fuck it, and go to the street and say, you know what, you're going to listen to me regardless. That's just how it's going to be. If you're willing to pay the consequences, continue to do what you're doing. But I'll guarantee you that one or two things are going to happen. If you continue to vandalize somebody's property, somebody's going to shoot you. If you continue to crawl up on the freeway, talk about your right on the skies, you're going to fall off into traffic. <laughs> Nothing good is going to come from it, guaranteed. Well, I've climbed up onto the I-5 signs and across the freeway, climbing up poles, climbing up barbed wire fences. And throwing spray cans at each other while we're up there and you know it's it, it's definitely fun it's just very risky the difference between art and graffiti is permission the difference between graffiti and art is permission the difference between graffiti and art is permission bottom line if i didn't ask for it don't want it bottom line 2002, this, the Belltown neighborhood looked around and, and realized that graffiti was really getting a stronghold in that neighborhood. So they organized um, if the first paint out.
we're Starbucks, uh, we represent Starbucks that are within the downtown area, and we are working with the Pioneer Square community to paint out uh, downtown Seattle, so we're covering up any graffiti and pick up glitter that we see along the way. Us three, we're uh, from the Reynolds Work Release, and so this gives us an opportunity to give back to the community. You've got individuals that say, well, yeah, I'll be a field inspector. I'll um, email the city every time I see, you know, tags on this particular property or every time I see suspicious activity or paint cans or what have you, I will, I'll let people know. My opinion of graffiti is uh, lack of lack of respect. I think that um, you know a lot of people will compare graffiti with art, but I think that the big difference between graffiti and art is permission. <laughs> what do you have in there, bottle of whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> Can I have that spray? Oh, where are the razors? Uh, yeah, it's not really coming. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Are you there? Little evil, 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 evil
a lot of times, sometimes I go on a site and I actually find these guys' practice pads. You know, some of this, a lot of this, the really pretty ones are premeditated. Because they're artists, that's truly what they're doing. And so a lot of times, sometimes they forget and leave their artwork on the site, but it's kind of funny. And those are the ones I really get a thrill out of painting over because this person probably spent, I don't know, the entire night doing it. <laughs> and so for me to paint it out, oh, it just makes me feel so good. <laughs> Growing up, I, I was never interested in really expressing myself artistically uh, when it came to bombing, you know, it was just about vandalizing and, and sort of making making my mark and and saying fuck you to the world. There is an ethics code at play, you know, um, I know guys that won't uh, deface certain things and you know don't want to deface private property or anything um, church related or school related or you know the, it, it's different for everybody um, I, I've had experiences run-ins with authorities and then ultimately I just figured it wasn't really worth it anymore um, stopped bombing you know a few years after that and really develop my style to be more self-contained and be relevant on a canvas level so I could, you know, display it in a gallery setting. See, I have to answer the phone every day and hear little old ladies who are afraid because they think gang members are coming to, I don't know, arrest them, rape them, rob them, whatever, because they don't understand this and this stuff. This is a new age thing and it scares those old people. And not only that, the ordinance says that they have to clean up within 10 days. They are not physically capable of cleaning it up time and time again. So those are the kind of calls I get. You know, sometimes we get calls from the police department and they say that they've apprehended somebody and can we send them photos? We keep a, quite an extensive archive of the tags that, we've, that we have removed. But, I mean, my guys have never been attacked. My technicians have never been confronted or anything like that. The other thing that I do say is we'd rather you um, we'd rather you convey your message in the privacy of your own home on your own walls. You only have so much room at your own house to try to paint on and once you do a good piece of work at your own house and you don't want to go over it where else to move to besides another piece of property. But you have to go back to the philosophy of permission. It wasn't his pri property. If he didn't have permission to do that, then that was, that's a crime. While someone might feel that it's their uh, entitlement to post that message, we feel, it's, you know, it's my, it might be my entitlement to remove that message. Lake City Way has got so many people, people are just like, randomly emailing us honking and they're stoked they're like oh now my commute isn't like wall 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 gross stuff they're like it's this bright thing to look at lake city in general gets no love from really anybody everybody calls it lake shitty and makes fun of it and then you know you get to know people that actually live there and they deserve public art just like people living in queen Anne do just like people living in um you know other other areas that tend to get more of the government dollars for those kind of things. We wanted to go to places that don't normally get that. I just think that if you're gonna tag or if you're gonna bomb, you gotta make it count and you gotta make it worth something to the viewer, you know, something that's going to be a little more than just throwing up your set or your name, um, maybe making a statement that's gonna make people think. This is a city uh, mural deal? Yeah. The property owner doesn't care, so. There, yeah. keep it up. Yeah, thanks, man. Here's the American Art Corps. Right. <laughs> there you go. Cops showed up and they weren't hassling us, so that's what's up.
once corporate America got a piece of it and tried to sell things with it. And, you know, I don't want to be negative. I'm a little soured on it, yet I keep doing it. I still, I still have like <laughs> 600 cans of spray paint in my house, but you know, whatever. One day you'll pay for it. Whether you'll either be, you know, you might spend some community service time and learn a little bit more about the, the reality of what you're doing, or it might be, you know, as a taxpayer one day. But some way you'll pay for it. Your parents are paying for it. Right now. It's become more than just pop art and more than just an alternative art form. It's become something more and it'll always be remembered as sort of this time period's um, signature style.